Welcome back. Please open your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verses 13 through 16 in a moment. So that's at the end of the New Testament if you're using a, a real Bible or open it up in your Bible app. Uh, if you're using a, a real Bible, you can always go to the last book, Revelation, and start flipping backwards <laughs> until you find 1 Peter. There is a gift God has given us that we want to take back. So before Christmas time, you find the longest lines are at the checkout counter, right? The checkout lines are the longest. But after Christmas day, the longest lines are the return lines. Return lines. Have you ever stood in a return line hoping and praying the person whose gift you're returning isn't gonna come by and see you? There's a gift that God gives to us that he wants us to have, that he expects us to have, that we want to take back. And it's the gift of holiness. Because we think we know what we want better than God knows what we want. We may believe and agree with the statement, God knows what we want better than we do. So we may agree with that, but we don't really believe it. Holiness is the gift of God. We try to push back on him or take back. Holiness, if you will, is God's green eggs and ham. We know the story of green eggs and ham, right? I do not like it in a box. I do not like it with a... We can all finish that fox. And, and the lesson of green eggs and ham is it turns out that many times we like something we say we don't like, right? That's what happened in the end. It turned out that, that this, this guy, whatever creature he was, found out that someone else knew what he wanted better than he did. And we need to apply this lesson to our, to our faith, that God truly knows what we want, not just what we need, but listen, what we want better than we do. God wants us to be holy. God expects us to become holy. Jesus suffered and died so that we could become holy. We don't want his sacrifice to be in vain. So, so this morning, as we enter a new year, a, a year that truly needs holiness and needs holy people. Uh, our goal is to understand God's holiness so that we will desire it and seek it. Think, think about this. If you ask the average Christian today, what is holiness? Many of them would say, I, I, I don't know. If you ask them, are you holy? They would say, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. We need to understand what holiness is so that we desire it. And then we will seek it. Because before you can become holy, you have to want to be holy. Before you can become holy, you have to want God's holiness. So first we need to hear that holiness is what God expects. So read with me now verses 13 through 16 from 1 Peter chapter 1. Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Gracious Almighty God, please help us, dear Lord, to understand what holiness is and the expectation you have for us to be holy. And we are praying that you would grant us a desire that we would seek after your holiness to be made completely holy, to be fully sanctified. Lord, give us ears to hear, give us minds to understand, give us hearts to believe and receive and obey, to seek what the Holy Spirit is saying to us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If we are going to be holy, then the first thing we need to do is beware of flabby thinking. 
beware of flabby thinking. Now, some of you, uh, I won't say you, some people reading this will see verse 13 and they'll say, hey, this proves that holiness is not something we get to have now, but it's something that Jesus will bring to us one day. We'll get when Jesus returns, right? Because it says, set your hope on the grace to be brought when Jesus returns. And Peter would say to those who assume that, that's flabby thinking. They missed the first part of verse 13, which says to have an alert mind and stay sober, which basically means think clearly and have disciplined mind. In other words, don't be a flabby thinker. No flabby thinking when it comes to our salvation. Let me just give you an example of a flabby thinking um, before we talk about it with our salvation. So Let's say you have a, a giant bag of Doritos and, you're, and you read it and you say, hey, there's only 100 calories. And so you begin eating the bag and you eat the entire bag. That's flabby thinking that will make you flabby. Because then you're wondering, why am I not feeling well? And you realize it's 100 calories per serving. And since it's the family size bag, you ever get those? There's like 40 servings in this thing. And that's why you don't feel well. We can tend to be flabby in our thinking when it comes to the hope of our salvation that Jesus is bringing. We need to understand what it is. And Peter has been talking about that back in verse 3 and verse 10 of this chapter. Jesus, we think, here's, a, here's an example of flabby thinking when it comes to salvation. When Jesus comes back, man, we'll get to live in mansions, we'll sail on yachts, we'll go to the beach all the time, we'll hang out with all the former deceased uh, people, we'll be floating on clouds, all of our needs will be met, and we'll, we'll, we'll eat all the food we want, and we'll, we'll never uh, have to work again. But that's not the picture of what Jesus is bringing that we get from the Bible. That's flabby thinking. Clear Minded thinking, disciplined thinking would ask, what does the Bible say? And if you turn, or you don't have to turn there now, but if you read in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 3, I'm going to read that to you right now. You get a true picture of what's going to happen when Jesus returns. The salvation that he is, is bringing. Listen now to Revelation, listen to Revelation 21, 1 through 3. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, listen now, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. The hope of eternal life. The hope of our salvation is that we are no longer separated from our holy and loving God. We will be able to, to see him with our eyes. We won't need glasses to see him. And we will be with him. He will dwell with us forever. We will no longer be separated from him because of sin. We will be together with him for eternity. This is the promise that Jesus made to the thief who was on the cross from, from the Gospel of Luke. You remember that? When Jesus said to the thief, today you and I will be in paradise. No, that's not what Jesus said. He said, today you will be with me in paradise. And it doesn't matter where paradise is because to be with Jesus, that is is paradise. Peter is trying to adjust our gaze. The Christian hope, and this is a hope we need to regain, the Christian hope is to be with our Heavenly Father, to be with our God forever. And, and the trouble is, and here's what Peter's doing, and you can try this if you want at home. I don't think you, it'll, it'll injure you. But, but hold on to your head and look down. And here's what Peter's doing. He is trying to get us to look up and to see, to, to our flabby heads, you know, want to look down. He's trying to get us to unflabby ourselves and look up 
and see this true hope that Jesus is bringing. Because here's what happens when we're looking down, we're looking at things in the world and we are saying, those are the things I want, I think will make me happy and will be valuable for eternity. So like, ooh, you know, I wanna live in a big house in, in heaven. You know, ooh, I wanna have my Xbox in heaven. Ooh, I'm gonna have my giant screen TV. And those things are really of no value in eternity. The great value of eternity, what Peter's trying to get us to do is to see, is that we get to dwell with our holy and loving God. He is the most valuable thing. We get to dwell with him forever. But to experience that, to have these things in eternity, to have a TV for eternity, you don't need to be holy. But if you want to spend eternity dwelling with your heavenly Father, with our heavenly Father, we must be holy. So the second thing we need to do if we're going to be holy is we need to understand what holiness is. We need to get the nature of holiness right. Holiness is not a list of do's and don'ts. It's about becoming more and more like Jesus. It's an internal transformation of our nature that makes an external difference in how we behave. Change the inside and the outside follows. Look at verse 14. Peter reminds us that those who have put their faith in Jesus have become children of God. In other words, our nature has changed. We now have the divine nature, the nature of our heavenly father. We've been reborn. We have the nature of our heavenly father inside of us. We're like him. We share in his holy nature through faith in Jesus. If you could put a spiritual window here in your heart, you would see that there is a change. If you put your faith in Jesus, there's a change that God has brought. Now we still have a choice. Will we go with it? Will we obey or will we disobey? But the change is there. So now we are able to obey and to pursue Christ-likeness, to pursue holiness. Hmm. Because we've been changed internally, we're able to choose to live differently. Now here's the main objection. People say, no. You cannot be holy this side of eternity. You cannot be entirely sanctified uh, until you get to heaven. You can't be perfect like our Heavenly Father is perfect, even though Jesus told us to be perfect like, Jesus, like our Heavenly Father. And to that objection, we have to ask the question, this question, is the cross that weak? Is the sacrifice of Jesus so powerless that it cannot do more in us than we could hope or imagine. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, God is able to make us holy now. The Christian, do you want to be holy? I have two pictures I'm gonna show you. These are our grill grates from my barbecue. The one on the left is cracked, it's, it's old, it's got caked on, uh, welded on food, you can't scrape off. It's coarse, it, por porcelain coated cast iron, so the porcelain is chipping off and the cast iron is, is rusting. And the grill grate that's on the right is perfect. And this is kind of a before and after picture, only the change did not happen because I got the right chemical, the right kind of brush, and was able to turn the old one and, and, and clean it all up. The change happened because I bought a brand new grill grate, right? I went to Amazon. Merry Christmas. This is my Christmas gift to me. And I show you this because this is an example of what God can do in us. He doesn't just kind of shine us up or polish us. He makes us completely new and perfect. Remember, the power of the cross is more than we can imagine. He can do this in us. And he's begun the process through faith in Jesus. He's already begun the process and now calls us to seek a full cleansing, to be holy as he is holy. But we have to want to be made like Jesus. We have to want to change. We have to come to a place where we no longer want to be the great on the left. We have to come to a place where we're tired of sin, where we say, you know what? I'm tired of having a cynical heart. 
I'm tired of being envious. I'm tired of being cruel to people and talking about them behind their back. I'm tired of being selfish. I'm tired of being greedy. I'm tired of worrying. I'm tired of being full of lust. I'm tired of being unforgiving. I'm tired of being hateful and cruel. I'm tired of being prideful. I'm tired of being angry. And we come to a place where we say, I don't want to be like that anymore. And we see the great on the right and we say, God, I want to be like that. Make me clean, make me new, make me holy. When we say that and we seek it, God is faithful and he will do it. God gives holiness to those who seek it. God gives holiness to those who seek to become like Christ. We cannot make ourselves holy. Only God can sanctify us entirely. Only God can make us like Jesus. Because it's God that does this work in us. Thankfully, we do not do the work ourselves. And therefore, because God does the work in us, it does not matter what condition we are in. We say, I, I can't become holy. Look, look how bad, if you remember that great, look how bad that great, that great is. Or look, imagine what that great looked like. I can never be made holy. And, and you're right. God would say, you're, you're right. You can't make yourself holy, but I can. Do you hear God saying that to you? You can't make yourself holy. You're right. You're too messed up. But I can make you holy through the blood of Jesus. But God, I've really messed up. And God says, then I can really clean you up. God is faithful. Those who will seek him, to make them holy, who repent, who confess and repent of these sins and say, God, make me holy. He will be faithful to do it. And here's what will happen. We as a church will get to hear stories of how God transformed li lives. We'll hear testimonies of transformation and their stories of how God made them holy will encourage us and we'll continue to seek more and more of his holiness. We will get to hear how God made the selfish person self-giving. The fearful become hopeful. The anxious find peace. We'll hear how liars have become truth tellers. The impure have become pure. The greedy are now generous. The unforgiving become forgiving. The hate-filled become love-filled, even for their enemies. The prideful become humble. The addicted are set free. The judgmental become accepting. The callous show kindness. Oh, the unimaginable transforming work of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you would bring this transforming work of holiness here to the people of Hilltop Church. Lord, that we would see lives change and we would hear these stories. Make it happen, Jesus, we pray. How do we seek God's holiness? First of all, we, we, we seek it together. We can't do it alone. We have to do it in, in community. It, re, it requires community. Everything God commands of us requires community. We need brothers and sisters with us as we study God's word, as we strive to learn what Jesus commands and live out his commands. We need them to encourage us to obey and hold us accountable. Again, we're talking about a Bible study group that does more than just learn what God says, but seeks to help each other in that group live out what Jesus commands. And we need to seek it by faith. I want to read to you uh, something that John Wesley wrote about seeking holiness by faith. He said this, seek holiness by faith. If you seek it by works, you will think, well, first I need to do something before I can be sanctified. I need to do this or that. But if you seek it by faith, you can expect it as you are and expect it now. Expect it by faith, expect it as you are, and expect it now. Do you believe that we are sanctified by faith? Then be true to your belief and look for this blessing just as you are, a poor sinner that has nothing to pay and nothing to plead except this, Christ died for me. And if you look for holiness as you are, then expect it now. Wait for nothing. Why should you? Christ is ready. 
and He is all you need. He is waiting for you. He is at the door. Let your inmost soul cry out, Come in, come in, precious Jesus. Cleanse me. Stay with me. Make me holy. Before you can be made holy, you must want to be made holy and then seek God's holiness. You must desire to be made entirely like Christ. Your character, your heart, your thinking, your attitudes, your whole self, your whole soul. It's a work of God we seek by faith and that he then works in us. It requires our community seeking it together. And then God who sanctifies us, God who makes us holy, will be faithful and do that work of holiness in us. In us. I want to invite you now to, to pray with me. Perhaps you've been listening and you're, you're realizing there is a work of holiness I need God to do in me. I've been trying to, to fix this. Perhaps you're just wanting a blanket. God, make me holy. Bring a transform, transformation to my life that I've been desiring and seeking. There's an area maybe of your life and you're saying, Jesus, I need you to transform this area. Then come with me right now to pray uh, in prayer, believing that God can and will make you and me holy. Gracious, almighty God, we come to you and we say, please forgive us for not desiring, not treasuring, not wanting your holiness. We understand now that holiness is a work you desire to do in us, to make us more like Jesus. You began this work in us. For those who have received Christ, and if you've not yet received Jesus, say, Jesus, come into my life now. I give my life to you. Wash away my sins. And now you and others who have received Christ, you've begun the work of making us holy. But somewhere along the line, we took it back or went to the return line. We stopped seeking it. Forgive us, Lord. And now we want your holiness. We want you to make us holy. We want you to, to change us. We, uh, perhaps one of the things I, I mentioned earlier, perhaps you're, you're, you're battling uh, telling lies or, 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 or lust or being envious or hateful or, or fearful or, or anxious or any of these things. Confess it to God now. Say, God, I need your help. Come into my life, Jesus. Transform me. Father, send your Holy Spirit right now and make me holy. Jesus, come into my life. Pray this to him. Jesus, come into my life. Have your way with me. Put your finger on anything you need to. Convict me of anything you need to. And make me holy. Break the power of sin, break any chain that binds me. He sings, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hey, if God has done a work in you, if you experience it, I, I just want to say, uh, let us know. Begin to tell your, your friends and, and family members. Give praise to God and start sharing that testimony. If he hasn't done a work yet, keep seeking him. Keep praying. He will do it. And, and you can share it with us on Facebook. You can email us. Go to you know, hilltopsd.com. Click on the connect card there. But we would love to hear what God has done. Let us share those testimonies. Amen.